the target or the author who is the VC. Right? So there are two different uh, anchor points for us to think about the network. Right? So you can look around yourself as an entrepreneur or you can look around the target, uh, the venture capitalists. So these two uh, are our starting points. And then you have to do two things, right? You have to get two things right. You have to select an appropriate contact and you have to persuade the contact to carry the message, right? So this, this is the challenge at hand. Uh, I have a question for uh, uh, Dipendu Biswas who asked, what, what do we mean by ego here? In the network theory, uh, usually when there are two, two people, there's the ego you, and there's the altar you're trying to connect to. It's technical terms in network theory of ego and alter, right? It's you and the contact you are going to make. Ego is you and the contact you're going to make is the alter. It's just technical terms. Say ego here for us means entrepreneur or the person seeking the resources. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just technical term in the literature and network theory. Thank you for that uh, question. Please, thank you for starting out with the first question. That's super helpful. If anything is not clear, let me know and I'm happy to stop and uh, uh, answer, answer questions. So we, are, we have to do two things as entrepreneurs. Right? We need to select the appropriate contact and persuade the contact to take the message to them. There are two things we need to do successfully to get our message to the venture capitalists and get a referral. That is a valid referral to the to the venture capitalist. What is a valid referral? A valid referral is some, something that reaches a venture capitalist. If he or she gets this, they will review this and give you the time of the day, right? That's what we want, right? We want the uh, venture capitalist to review this seriously and then have a conversation with the entrepreneur. Investment decision might then depend upon the quality, their evaluation and their due diligence process, but we want a hearing first, right? a proper hearing and a proper evaluation. So network activation can go through many, uh, many intermediaries, but has to ultimately reach the venture capitalist. And the venture capitalist should acknowledge this is a valid referral. If I get something from this person, I will definitely pay attention to this. And then I definitely give time of the day to the entrepreneur. And we are focusing on not just cold calls or cold messages to the VC, but VC acknowledges, again, I repeat this point, and this is important, that VC acknowledges, venture capitalist acknowledges the referral because she trusts the sender, right? So she trusts some the sender or because of the sender's status or her position or things like this. In a normal course of business, if she got, if she, the venture capitalist got a message from, the, uh, from that sender, they would pay attention. Again, ego here is the entrepreneur. And uh, then the ultimate thing we want to do is they get a, a big chance to pitch the VCs where then they, they, uh, their uh, pro, uh, proposal is evaluated. Right? That's what we're trying to simulate, understand and study. Right? How can entrepreneurs get in front of VCs through a credible source that the VC learn, knows learn, uh, and trusts? Okay. That's the sort of the broader framing of the paper and also it's practical importance, right? What do we tell our young entrepreneurs as they are working on their projects and they're trying to raise resources? How can they get in front of investors? So there's a little bit of network theory I'm going to cover because it's an academic talk. Uh, so excuse me for that, uh, right? Uh, but if any parts are unclear, please let me know. I'm happy to talk through them. Uh, so if the entrepreneur can look at cognitive process and say, who are the people in my network, right? Who do I know? What resources do I have? And how can I reach the people, right? This is what in the literature in entrepreneurship is called effectuation. If you study entrepreneurship as a theory, it says, it starts with who am I, who do I know, what resources can I, do I have, and then how do I 
make something out of this. Right? This is popularized by Saras Saraswati, and it's it's a behavioral way of thinking about entrepreneurship. The other way to think about entrepreneurship is what is the opportunity I want to pursue and what resources I need for the opportunity. That's a very opportunity focused approach. Right? But when entrepreneurs think they can start and think about who they are and who surrounds them and how they think about entrepreneurship, uh, how they can access resources. So the advantage of the entrepreneur looking at her own connections is these connections are tied to the entrepreneur in, uh, oh, thank you uh, 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 for uh, Professor Tilai for sharing. Yes, Sarasa is a great scholar and her effectuation theory is one of the central fold of entrepreneurship. And it's, uh, I'm in August company, it's, uh, previous lecture was by Saras, right? Uh, it's a, I was always a privilege, but if it was Saras who gave the previous lecture, it's a big deal, right? Uh, she's a big scholar. Super impressed with your ability to organize a lecture with uh, Saras. Let me go back to this, right? Okay, uh, back at the ranch, as they say in the US. So socially proximate, if you think about who you know, it's most more likely that who you know are going to be your trusted, close contacts, your strong emotional bonds of effective bonds of trust, love, reciprocity. Right? So these strong bonds are tightly connected with you if you start with this kind of an effort. But if you change from ego proximate, ego is the entrepreneur, the ego proximate, the entrepreneur proximate contacts are going to be emotionally connected to you, right? But they come with the, perhaps the disadvantage, they might be distant from the VC, right? They're surrounding you, but they're distant from the VC. They're more likely to act, but they're distant from the VC, right? But, or you can shift your lens, and then go look at the target VC and ask them who are the people that surround the VC in who are the VC's close contacts, who does the VC network with, what are his perhaps LinkedIn profiles looking like, and what are the commonalities around the VC that we can hope uh, to, uh, to look at people who's uh, influential in the venture capitalist uh, the, uh, 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 network, right? It's less likely that you will have a strong connection with anybody you pick in around that surround the VC. Because uh, uh, more often than you're going to be removed far further away from the VC. And com when compared to people who surround you and who provide you with resources, advice, and uh, 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 friendship and trust, when you're trying to reach somebody at Target and look at the resource, uh, the network of the people around the world, venture capitalists, it's less likely you're connected to them in a strong uh, track. Right? So the challenge here is kind of a trade-off. The people around you are more likely to take your message forward, but they are distant from the VC. The people around the VC are less likely to consider your request but more likely, conditional and considering, more likely to take it to the VC, right? So now, which is better in some case, uh, these cases, right? Do you go around who you know, right? And then try to push that message up, or do you target the, uh, uh, the VC and look at the uh, people around the VC and see if they will, give, uh, they will be willing to listen to you? It's less likely they will listen to you because you are not connected strongly with them. But should they pick this up, it's more likely that they can take it to the venture capitalist and the venture capitalist will give you the time of the day. So I pull up this figure and this is this uh, visualization of the, uh, the entrepreneur is the same person who, who is represented in the dark, uh, right? And the first way we can think about is you can go towards the contacts around you the entrepreneur-centric contacts. The second way the entrepreneur can go is to look at the investor, in, investor and see who's tied to the investor and look at investor-centric contacts. I see a question from a uh, comment from Krishna Kumar. Focus on target proximate contacts and see if ego proximate contacts can be achieved. Yeah, this is interesting. That's what we're going to take a look at this. 
uh, we should, we're trying to say, because in research, we want to know why, if it's not been done before to study this, we want to take this apart and see which ones are better, right? Uh, thank you for the comment, Krishna, right? This is what we want to look at. We want to look at getting uh, entrepreneurs entry contracts and listing the venture capitalists centric contracts and seeing which message of the entrepreneur will be taken to the VC and the VC will acknowledge it to be successful, right? And the trade-offs are here, as you understand, uh, on one side, the contacts around the entrepreneur on the top, right, are strong bonds. They will, they will listen to you, they'll give you affection and they're more likely to act. But as you see, they're much further removed from the uh, venture capitalist, right? In a, in a perceptual space of networks, right? They're more likely to be removed from the venture capitalist, right? In the second one, the entrepreneur is further from the target VC and also from the, inve uh, from the investor centric contacts. But the entrepreneur, but the contacts themselves are very close to the VC. Right? Again, thank you for the comment, Krishna. So this is the basic setup of what we want to study in saying, what should we tell our entrepreneurs, our students, our entrepreneurs who come to us and say, how should they go about this process? I have a, SMU also runs a PhD program. Uh, I was doing a pro seminar lecture uh, in this and one of the students uh, made a, 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 the student's name is uh, E.B. and she's in the second year now of the PhD program. She made a cute uh, a slide for her to explain. We discuss papers, we give papers to our PhD students and we discuss the papers. And she said, look, this is what you're saying. In this paper, uh, you're going to say, you have a strong connection, right? but they're socially distant. You have a close relationship with, with, with the investor, but weak motivation to assist. Which one is better? Right? And we have a hypothesis that says investor-centric contacts are better for the entrepreneur to focus on. And the reason why we have the investor-centric contacts is in the network literature. If you look at the unfolding chains, let's say your close contact is likely to act, right? But the close contacts, next contact is likely to act only 50% of the time. And then you go one more chain that becomes even smaller, right? So if you look at 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, even assuming it's standard 50%, you get to 0.25 and 0.125, and it becomes very small, very quickly. So the probability of the chain continuing is very, very small as the chain length increases. Right. As the number of hands it has to go through, once you start with the entrepreneur centric contact. Whereas it's less likely the, uh, that you, you can get the uh, contact of the venture capitalist to listen to you and then uh, take things forward because you only will share a weak time, if at all any. But it's more likely if you take it, the investor is more likely to invest. Right? So that, that's our hypothesis one. In this paper, in this project, we lay down our hypothesis and say, look, the who you focus on matters and it matters like this. It's better to focus on the contacts of the venture capitalist than on your close contacts and getting them to take things further. That's our hypothesis one. Okay. Any questions on this? Okay, I'll move forward then. Thank you for that. So now you've selected the contact, right? Let's say you selected either your, your contact was close tie or closely tied to you, or you selected a contact around the investor, you selected the contact, right? Now, what do you tell the contact? Right? As an entrepreneur, what can you tell the contact? Right? You can just give the facts and say, look, this is, I, this is me, this is I, this is what I want, right? That's just the basic facts. You can share your basic facts, or you can try something more, right? You can try something more. You have two popular choices to think about here. The first choice is you can think about reciprocity, right? You can say, hey, how would, we'll be grateful, we'll, uh, we'll, if we can pay back in the future, we will pay back, 
right? When you think about reciprocity. And the other thing you could also potentially do, although some people might find it untrue, is to say, hey, if you get funded, we are happy to pay you a finder's fee or a funder's fee or something like this. I get emails from my undergraduate students and my uh, entrepreneurs saying, Prof, if you can help us find things, we'll offer a commission, things like this, right? It, it sounds weird for, because I would, if I could help them, I would help them and I would not take any, anything from them, right? But it does feel unfold, but I do get these emails, right? Um, uh, and we would, as, in, as in the academic uh, world, we, we are act as a platform to connect people and not to profit from our connections. Uh, but I do get these emails um, as uncouth as they are. So you could offer monetary incentives. You could offer reciprocity. Our uh, sort of hypotheses too are around these things. Compared to just the facts, we expect reciprocity to be work better. And again, compared to just the facts, we expect monetary incentives to work better. Uh, even though some people might find the monetary incentives uncool. This is our second set of uh, hypotheses too on the message content, what, kind of, what comes in the message content. Again, let me pause here and see if you have any questions.